I think it's important to to have um, one message to take home, and I try to point out um, the half message in uh, every uh, session of these uh, GIGOS days. Uh, I think for the opening session, um, the most or, or, or the talk I, I take my mind is uh, to become affiliate and a GIGOS affiliate in Verbo Atlantic is an info is a informed decision. The colleagues in Portugal and Spain are not going in this way to GIGOS. They are defining pros and cons to be there. Uh, and I think this is a guarantee uh, to success. A nice example to be followed in other regions. Uh, in the second session, we talk at most about a structure, representatives, boards, and everything. We have to do it every four years. The IEG renewed his uh, me memberships, and GIGOS has to do it. We are almost complete. And I hope that by the end of October, November, uh, we have all our boards uh, defined. Um, I include also a let's uh, presentation in this session because they are topics that are not considered before in GIGOS. Uh, I, I learned a lot. They are very new and it could be uh, interesting topics to, to follow um, to see if we can exploit uh, these themes for, for future pro uh, products, for instance. Uh, I will try to, to follow the, the development in the first three and, and see what Alex um, reaches with the project. Uh, for the GIGOS affiliates, uh, we see the focus of the different regions as GIGOS Japan is focused in infrastructure GIGOS DAG is focused uh, on the integrated analysis, and we see the implementation phase of the GIGOS affiliate uh, Ibero Atlantic. And, and I hope uh, that we get an, a formal proposal uh, soon. Uh, in the external activities, uh, we heard about the optimiza optimization of uh, outreach activities within. IDG, and I mean the GIGOS coordinating of and the COB of the IEG. Uh, we get a very nice update about the activities and future uh, act, um, plans of the subcommittee on geodesy of UNGGIN. And I will, we also heard a diagnosis of the geodesy in South America. Um, Making genetic data and produce fair. So I, I read uh, newly in a paper in Nature that uh, the new oil is the data. So if, if we can handle the OI for genetic data uh, here, and we have here a genetic portal with all genetic data, metadata, products, and input data, we are um, making a direct relationship between the data producers and the data users, and this is does is uh, make geodesy fair. I think this is this is very important. Um, the session, Mike sessions about the Bureau of Network observations, we get. A brief reports of the different services and, and committees in the BNO. And I think we are updated what the services are doing. All these presentations will be available uh, via Senodo. And any colleague uh, wanting to have an update on the IM, the services updates can read this presentation. And it's nice to see what they are doing. Uh, then we, we have the focus areas today, uh, interdisciplinary approaches, new technologies, and combined products. I, I think it is, uh, they are working. We, we need to materialize a little bit the, the two proposals. 
with the combined tropospheric products and the INSAR GNSS. Uh, perhaps for uh, INSAR GNSS, we could uh, check um, which groups are working on, on this. And this can be done when the IEG infrastructure for the next uh, IEG structure for the next uh, for this term is ready. Probably we can try to to get a, a working group in this direction because this this topic this specific topic is not covered by the IEG now. Uh, and then we have the the BPS um, session. Um, I think uh, I would like <laughs> to go a little bit in the direction of the geodetic variables. Um, I, I think this, this slide from uh, uh, Hans Jörg summarizes very well uh, what GIGOS want to do. So uh, he mentioned, if I remember correctly, uh, his words, uh, the GIGOS uh, is focused on or the, or the, the three fundamental uh, objectives of GIGOS are, are the observing of the Earth system, provided an integrated uh, reference frame and benefiting society, uh, science and society. I, I like this, this conscience presentation very good. And in the introductory um, presentation to the, to the GIGOS days, we talk about that one of the challenges uh, for, for GIGOS is to identify those products that could address science and societal needs, and we need to define the requirements for these products. And if we recover the, the, the Thomas presentation, he's also talking about requirements in terms of spatial resolution, temporal resolution, and accuracy for the variables. So we can easily change here products by variables, and we are talking about the same the same thing. Uh, therefore, my, my thing, I probably I'm wrong, and I hope you say it. If I'm wrong, I, I hope that you say this. Uh, we can try to advance uh, in the in the um, development formulation of the uh, variables uh, taking the levels proposed by by Thomas. This is a, a very nice approach to, to face the problem. And to say that the variables of level three are those geodetic products describing the signals of their system. For instance, the total water storage. This is a geodetic product with um, Earth system name. The level two are the primary geodetic, geodetic products. So, those products that only the geodesis know, for instance, ITRF, or for instance, the geoid. Many people are using these products, but only the geodesis know what does, what does it mean. And the level one would be the geodetic infrastructure. I think the geodetic infrastructure, uh, uh, Thomas mentioned here, level one variables could be used to measure the quality or robust, robust, robust quality, <laughs> completeness <laughs> of the geodetic infrastructure in, in a given region. I think this level one uh, variables would be very important for, for the new Global Geodetic Center of Excellence because they will need to measure in some way um, which regions require more support to the develop or to improve their their uh, quality or their geodetic infrastructure. So my, my thoughts uh, are oriented to go in this direction. Start to define the, the different variables, level three, level two, level one, in the same approach proposed by Thomas. And when we have a concrete proposal, let's say, uh, we can meet again and continue discussing on this topic, but I would say we need to start to work on that. And I would like to, to hear just your comments on this specific topic, because this is uh, homework 
uh, Thomas uh, tell us yesterday that we should decide what to do. And, and I would like to, to hear your comments on, on this topic. Who say, I, I, have, I have one idea. No? So the, the bus is leaving at, in 35 minutes. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, I was a bit, I don't know if I should assert this topic or not, but um, so I think uh, the idea is really nice, I think, uh, that first of all, we have this level of the processing. On the other hand, uh, when we have this, you know, structure, uh, we know how we should communicate with society, politicians, and also, uh, I mean, the public. So, I mean, level three, having level three in the priority, is really interesting to me uh, because I know, for example, uh, some geodetic groups in some universities are being closed because the importance of geodesy is not recognized. And I assume that we are, you know, responsible for this. And that's why, because we couldn't identify well, you know, the connections of our geodetic observations to uh, how they help the society. So again, I, I'm, I'm really interested in this idea that we should put in front the, those data which are, you know, uh, the, that the community can have an idea about. You know, I, I'm not the community, I mean the public and also uh, our audience, our users, you know, they have a sense about it. So for example, what are the hot topics now? It's climate change. So, but when we say ITRF, of course, it might have some contribution to climate change, but is it, is, is it going to make sense also for the non-geodesists? I don't think so. So uh, then in level three, I, I, I'm, I would really happy to know them as the, you know, our outcome of the work and how we are also contributing, you know, to these hot human, hot topic and human challenges. So maybe, yeah, uh, I, would, uh, I would say that, yeah, uh, um, that can be a good idea in general. <laughs> yeah, as I, as I said yesterday already, concerning the title and the acronym, I think what is uh, sure, we have to use essential, that was mentioned by Richard yesterday, to be in line with the other essential variables, and we have to use the term variable. We usually call it product, but we have to use variable again to be in line with the others. And now the question is, what is the, the character in between, the E and V? I would uh, very much favor again uh, ge keep geodesy there because that's our discipline and um, and uh, yesterday it was suggested to add a kind of subtitle or with a hyphen essential geodetic variables for earth system or something and uh, to explain why do we need and why do we uh, have these uh, essential variables and uh, this would be, I think, a good compromise also to show the rest of the world uh, why we are providing these variables. And I'm uh, also, I agree with Thomas, uh, who yesterday suggested to start with level three, rather general um, terms or, or variables like earth deformation or uh, sea level rise or something, uh, so, and then to to go then to to also to mention level two and level one, which are more the geodetic parameters that we know, but 
with a level three, and then people, okay, they are monitoring, they're determining earth deformation, for instance. Then people under easily understand what we consider as um, essential geodetic variables. Detlef, next. I, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, to say something uh, too simple, almost stupid, but we have uh, time, so <laughs> I, I have to, to say those things as we are almost living. Uh, if we want that geodesy arrive uh, to people, uh, I think we must think what people do more often. And what people do is uh, take the phone and wonder where am I and where uh, I want to go. And so they think that the solution is Google Maps or equivalent. But we must uh, uh, get that they think that the solution is geodesy, that Google Maps is not magic, that it's uh, something behind supporting the navigation systems and so the position, where am I, and where are the other things I need, the solution is geodesy. And we need to, to, to the, the, give it the measure, arrive, to transmit that measure, measure simple to start. And then there is people who is interested in the future, and it's change, and many things. But more often, is probably several times a day, is where am I, where I'm going to. Yeah, so I just wanted to make a, a small comment regarding level three. So um, I really liked the presentation of, of Thomas uh, because he was also uh, mentioning uh, for whom and in for which purposes uh, we define such variables, and uh, it was also recapitulated in, in other presentations. Um, and I think for this definition, we need to open the discussion. So uh, it is not possible to, to define the application of the variables uh, such, uh, just by geodesists. Uh, I think we need an interaction with other uh, disciplines within uh, IUGG in general, and also other unions, uh, in order to, to see how from GRC uh, we, can, we can contribute. And I am pretty sure that then we will have a very nice definition on the, on the application and on the definition of such variables. Then we can go back to level two and see how we uh, can arrive to those to those variables, but I, I, we need to open the discussion. Yeah, uh, first of all, Laura, thank you very much for uh, showing the slide. I think this is an important basis for the discussion, and we see that this is really important. So I totally agree with with all the things which has been said, and I have one additional comment here. So I also supports the idea that level three should be considered for the essential variables. And in addition, I think uh, Thomas mentioned it already yesterday, a matrix. I think a matrix could help very much to link the geodetic products with the essential variables. And we will see then uh, probably that, for example, the ITF or also the georate uh, will be the important basis for many of the essential variables. And I think this, this uh, matrix could be very valuable to make the contributions of geodesy of the geodetic product very, very visible. Um, uh, any comment from the remote audience? No? <laughs> I, I would say, the, the suggestion, uh, Thomas' suggestion is is to to work on this a little bit in in the BPS, in, in the frame of the BPS. Um, he also suggests um, to have a, a core working group to to make the first propos uh, proposals about this topic, and it's easier to have a draft 
for the discussion because uh, it's, it's easier to say uh, you did this wrong <laughs> i could do it better but if there is no no basis for discussion nothing happens so i would say that that uh, you and thomas to coordinate the, the works in on this direction and when we meet in one year we will see what you get in this okay okay this is everything recorded as far as i understood there is already a, a group working on this and the not working okay there's a group but not working okay so but uh because probably there are some new uh, people like me so who would like to join you know and is there still the possibility to yes, sure. okay i have you already on the list no 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 of course of course of course we need people to work uh, okay i'm happy to to have this ready and I think uh, the next highlight of the GIGOS days, you can see here the, the group uh, photo. Uh, thank you, Felipe, for the nice photos. Uh, we have 40 online par on site participants and in remote participants. You can see the, the numbers, uh, day three. The last one is day three, sorry. We don't, have, uh, we don't have the final statistics because we need to close the session to know how many people were was there. Uh, it's very interesting to see the many remote participants considering that this is a business meeting. We talk here only about um, the essence behind. And it's, it's nice to, to see um, how many people interested in, in GIGOS. And, and now, the the big question where we will meet in next year so you can see here uh, there are many or there, there were many retreats uh, for gigos and many meetings planning meetings implementing meetings and, and the gigos days uh, itself were established in 2015 and you can see here where they um, were hosted and uh, now we need a new venue my personal wishes are there. For instance, uh, in, in China, in Middle East, we, we don't have nothing in this region. Uh, probably the next workshop of, of uh, Astro Geo is the name of your, <laughs> your project. Astrogeo. Probably, probably I enjoyed I enjoy meeting the Astrogeo Gigos or, or Argentina, who knows? Pasadena, who knows? So, the floor is yours. <laughs> Please. That's Martin and I have a, a plan B, but it would be nice if we could meet in, in other regions. Uh, so the, the idea of have, uh, having the GIGOS days in different regions is to go to the uh, who is not uh, are able to come to Europe, for instance. If they no, are not able to travel, we try to, to bring GIGOS to him uh, and to show what we are doing. And, and this could be interesting for you and for us and if somebody has one idea, we will be happy to hear about the idea. You can take a, a picture of my wishes and say, okay, today is Laura's uh, birthday. I will let her know that the Gigos days will be. Okay. We will try to, to concretize um, a venue, and as soon as we know where we uh, can meet, then we will let you know. I, I think this is my last uh, slide, and I would like to ask the local organizing committee members 
to come here. All the local organizing groups. So I, I think it's nice. You are also local organizing committee. <laughs> please, please, Felipe also. So I, I think it's nice to see all the faces that make possible that we are here. It was really a very, very nice meeting. It was uh, warm and I feel at home. I hope you also. So I think we we should thank the, the organizing force. <laughs> and right now we have Oktoberfest in Munich, and we we cannot go there because we have to work here. So uh, I bring a little bit October 1st to you. And, and this is the, the well-known famous Weisswurstel aus München, by uh, uh, white sausages. Uh, they are very typical in München and in October 1st also, you know, you were there. Um, and the best, the best part of the Weisswurstel is the mustard. <laughs> so, so I hope that next week you can take a seat and in a coffee break you can enjoy a Weisswurstel from Munich. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Muchas gracias. 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 So, uh, and I think with this we can close our meeting and I I will will happy to see you in one year somewhere around the world. Thank you. Thank you.